Welcome back to another lesson and what we'll do in this lesson is try to find how you can calculate pressure inside liquids at various points or various situations. What we'll also find is how you can find well density of liquids given the pressure and the height of column of certain liquids under certain situations. So the first off is an example where you have a glass shaped U tube and you have oil on one side so the orange liquid represents the oil and water is on the other side and the whole system is stationary that is it's reached an equilibrium where the water or the oil are not moving what's also given are the heights or the dimensions and let's go ahead and label these dimensions so this length is given as l and this height is given as d so this is kind of leveled with this this height is d and we have to now find the density of this liquid so let's call this density l this is what we have to find given the situation so if the liquids are not moving we can say well the pressure at this point over here which is this should be the same as the pressure at this point because if the pressure here let us say was more than the pressure here then this oil column would have pushed the liquid down pushed the water down to reach the equilibrium but since both the liquids are stationary we can assume that the pressure here and the pressure here is same so therefore it boils down to finding what is the pressure here and what is the pressure here so on the left hand side we can say well the pressure is one on account of the atmospheric pressure which is pushing the liquid down and let's label it as p naught and the pressure due to the liquid column or the oil column so left hand side we can write the pressure is p naught plus the pressure due to the liquid column which we learned in the earlier lesson can be written as rho into length of the column and we can clearly see that the length of the column is d plus l into gravity and this should equal to the pressure over here which can be written as one the pressure due to the atmospheric column above this tube which is p naught plus the liquid over here of length l and therefore we can write the pressure over here is equal to p naught plus rho of water into the height of the column which is l over here into g and you can see that the atmospheric pressure is cancelling out and once you cancel p naught what you can see is that g also cancels off and therefore you can write that the density of the liquid is equal to rho of water into l divided by d plus l so what you can see is that while we try to find the density of the liquid it's got nothing to do with what the atmospheric pressure was or what is the force of gravity so our second example is that of a barometer and how we use barometer to find atmospheric pressure so barometer typically has an inverted glass tube in a, a trough which is filled with mercury and the atmospheric pressure kind of pushes the mercury up this glass tube and the height to which the mercury reaches represents the pressure of the atmosphere so let's go ahead and find how this is actually done so the first method we'll use to find atmospheric pressure is that we'll use newton's second law of motion which says that the net force acting on a body is equal to the product of mass into the acceleration induced in it now here mass of body would be this column of mercury which is actually stationary so the various forces acting on this column of mercury are one the force of mercury vapor which is over here so let's go ahead and write this as force one then we have the atmospheric pressure which is kind of pushing the mercury up which is force f2 and then we have the mass of the mercury itself which is kind of pushing down and we can write that as mg so if we were to represent this mass of mercury as a point mass it would look something like this so this is your point mass 
which is mercury in this column and the various forces on it are F1 in the downward direction, F2 in the upward direction and again the gravity pointing in the downward direction. So if we put all the forces on the left hand side and we assume that all forces acting in upward direction are positive and all vectors pointing in downward direction are negative, we can say well F2 minus F1 minus mg should equal to mass into acceleration but we know that this mercury column is static it is not moving so acceleration is zero so we'll equate this with zero and we'll say that f2 is equal to f1 plus mg now we also know that force is equal to product of pressure and area so we can say that p2 into a and area of cross section is nothing but that of the tube should equal to p1 into a plus the mass of the mercury column which can be written as rho mercury into the cross section into the height of the column and let's say the height reached over here is h so the volume of mercury would be a into h and if you multiply it with its density rho m you will get the mass into g now once again you can see that the area of the cross section is cancelling off so we'll go ahead and cancel that and what we get is p2 and here p2 is nothing but the atmospheric pressure so it's atmospheric pressure which is acting over here and can be written as p0 which in turn is actually pushing in the upward direction so we can substitute p2 with p0 and this is equal to p1 and P1 is nothing but the pressure of the mercury column which is exerting pressure on the mercury column itself. But we know that mercury is hardly volatile so it will have very little vapor pressure and we can assume that the pressure over here is zero and the other expression we get is rho m into h into g. So what you find is that the atmospheric pressure can therefore be represented as a product of density of mercury into height of the column into the gravity and here the temperature considered is 0 degree centigrade and the value of gravity is 9.8066 meters per second square so if the gravity value is slightly different or the temperature is different slight corrections would need to be made to find the atmospheric pressure now the other way of finding the same atmospheric pressure could be using the equation which we've learned in the earlier lesson which is p2 is equal to p1 plus density of the liquid under consideration into g into y1 minus y2 so here we'll assume that this is level y1 and this is level y2 so the pressure we'll assume over here is p1 and the pressure over here is P2. But we know that P1 is nothing but P0 or the atmospheric pressure. So let's go ahead and substitute the values over here in this equation. And we find that P2 is the pressure due to the mercury column, which we know is actually almost equal to zero. And this therefore equals P1, which we know is P0 plus rho into g into y1 y1 here we assume is 0 minus y2 which we assume is l or in this example we've considered it as h so what we find is p naught equals rho g into h and i must say that rho here is that of mercury so let me write this as rho mercury into g into h now that's the second way of finding the atmospheric pressure but but what i want to point out is that when you're using this equation it's often convenient to take y1 level as that where you have the atmospheric pressure acting on the system so in the third example let's go ahead and see how a manometer works so a manometer is very often used to find pressure of gases so let's say you have gas in this in this chamber and the pressure of this gas is 
Fpg and we have to find the pressure of this gas. So a manometer has a setup like this. The gas is in, in, in a spherical uh, glass and then it's attached to a U-tube which has a liquid inside of certain density. So how we'll approach this problem is that first we'll find what is the pressure over here at the same level as Pg. So let's say that the pressure over here is P2 and the level here is Y2 and let us say that the pressure here is P1 and the level is Y1. Now you would notice that we've once again taken Y1 over here where you have actually atmospheric pressure acting on the upper surface. So if we use the same equation which is P2 is equal to P1 plus rho of liquid into G into Y1 minus Y2, we can go ahead and substitute various values and we know that P2 here is to be found. So P2 is equal to P1 which is actually P0 plus rho of the liquid into G into Y1 here is 0 minus Y2 and it's also given that the length of this column is H. So we can say this is minus and what Y2 would be minus H because it's below the zero level. So what you get is P2 is equal to P0 plus rho of liquid into G into H. So if value of P2 over here is P0 plus rho LGH, you can say that since the entire system is in equilibrium, the pressure of the gas over here is also Pg, which is equal to P2. So we can say that Pg is also equal to P0 plus rho L into G into H. You know this is the absolute pressure. And the gauge pressure we know is considered when you remove the atmospheric pressure. So the gauge pressure here is just rho L G into H. So what I would like to say in conclusion is that how you approach numerical problems uh, like this is uh, you take two sides of the liquid or the setup where the pressure is equivalent or equal and find what is the pressure on each side and each side would have pressure one on account of the atmospheric pressure and two on account of a liquid or a gas and once you're able to establish it equate the two and you'll end up finding one of the variables which is required to be found so if you like this video please go ahead and give a thumbs up and also subscribe to the science cube